The part that takes all the pressure is the horizontal part. The cone of the multi-unit is also smaller. You want some space between the gingiva and the bar. Hello and welcome back to Anika Dental Show, where we discuss interesting cases and new procedures in the field of dentistry. Feel free to send us your interesting cases so we can review them and make a video about it. With us today is Dr. Yaniv. Hello. Hi, how are you? Amazing. How is the quarantine going? Great. Let's see what you brought us today. What we're gonna see here today is a uh, overdenture bar. Uh, the bar is based on uh, five implants in the anterior region. Uh, on the implants, you can see multi-units and all the on the multi-units will be the metal structure. I see that all the implants are buckle inclined. That is what, one of the problems in this case. Mm -hmm. Because they buckle inclined, we want the bar to shift into the palatal region. So we'll get a better aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You can see in this picture that the pillars of the bar are buccally inclined because they have to be in the same uh, line with the implant. But the bar itself goes to the palatal area. So the smaller the multi-unit I have, the smaller the cone of the multi-unit, the smaller the pillar will be, and I'll be able to move the uh, connectors of the bar more palatally. Thus, I'll get a better aesthetics, and I'll have more place for the overdenture, for the plastic, for the opaque to uh, mask the metallic color, mm -hmm. and the end result will be much better. So the smaller the multi-unit, it will hold better, it can take, it will stand the same forces as the bigger ones? The multi-unit, the part that takes all the pressure is the horizontal part. Mm -hmm. So I can make the cone a little bit smaller or even much smaller and still I'll have enough surface for the multi-unit to hold. It won't be a problem uh, with forces. If I don't have too large bar, too high bar, and the moment on the screw will stay the same, everything will be fine. You said that it's based on a smaller multi-unit. Yeah. Uh, so what uh, is special about them? In the smaller ones that we used for this case, the overall diameter of the multi-unit is smaller. Uh, it's about uh, 0.5 millimeters smaller. The standard multi-units that we have on the market are about 5 millimeters in diameter. So this is this part the body of the multi-unit. The multi-unit that we use in here are about 4.5. The diameter of the body of the multi-unit is 4.5. The pillar that we'll have will be smaller in its base. Mm -hmm. But not only that, the cone of the multi-unit is also smaller. In here you can see the cone is about two and a half millimeters height. In here you have 0.8. So it leaves for you more surface area? Yes, so you have bar. much more area for the screw and you can make the pillar of the bar much thinner. The thinner the pillar of the bar, the less problems you have in the aesthetical regions. The screw will be much closer to the horizontal part of the multi-unit and the height of the pillar also doesn't have to be that high. You can see a demonstration between the two multi-units. The first one is in the mouth and the second one is on the model. Mm -hmm. In the mouth you can see the small cone of the multi-unit and in the model you see, it's the, the model of this patient. You can see the height of the cone that could have been if we used... Regular ones. Regular ones, yeah. What you're saying is that if you would use a regular multi-unit, like there would be a space between the bar and the gingiva. Probably not, because the horizontal part of the multi-unit is still in the same height of the gingiva. You even maybe want it a little bit higher than the gingiva. You want some space between the gingiva and the bar, because this way the patient, when he takes off the bar, he can clean these areas. You won't have inflammation. The lifespan of the implants will be much higher if you have less inflammation. You have more options to clean the bar uh, and it's m much easier for the patient because if the patient, if the bar is right on the gingiva, it's hard for the, for the patient to clean it. It won't clean itself. So the patient needs to have more options to clean the, these areas. Can this multi-unit be used in other types of metal-based restorations? 
you can use this type of multi units in other metal based restorations because the base of the restoration would still be metal. If the implant is buccally inclined and you have a problem with the uh, in the buccal area in the you don't have enough space for the ceramics, you won't have a good aesthetics because you don't have enough for the opaque layer, you don't have enough for the uh, translucent layer. You want to, the PFM to be as much as real as possible. In this case, when you don't have enough space and you want to make a PFM, for example, PFM bridge, you would still, it would still be better if you would use smaller types of multi-units because you can save space in the areas when you don't really need it you don't really need it and you can use this space for the aesthetical parts if you have enough space so it does it doesn't matter but if you don't have enough space it it would fit great in different types of works also you can use it in pfm works you can use it in a acrylic on metal based you can use it on every type of metal based work so why to use the regular ones the regular ones it's you would probably use when you have a lot of space and you need to use and get multi units. You have the the whole kit. It's it's very you you have only one sleeve. You have only one screw. You have uh, and get multi units. You have straight multi units. Everything is much more simpler with the smaller types of multi units. You have different sleeves. You have different heights. The and yet multi-unit doesn't fit with the screws and the sleeves to the straight one. You can have a little bit of confusion. And because of that, if you have enough space, use the standard one so the technician won't make any mistakes. Uh, you won't fit the wrong screw to the wrong multi-unit. If you don't have enough space and you want to have a better uh, aesthetics, you can use this one if you don't need angulation. So, all the screws, all the multi units will be the same. Use this one. Choose the right one for each case, but know why you're choosing this. Uh, what are the pros and cons of every type of multi unit? So, what do we see here? The difference between the regular one and the flat V type. We took the model from the previous slide. Uh, and we changed one of the multi units from the small cone to the to the bigger cone. We did it to show the differences uh, when you have two close multi units. You can see in this type of multi unit that the cone is very small. The horizontal part of the multi unit is still on the height of the gingiva. In here, the horizontal part also in the height of the gingiva, but the cone is much bigger. So the base of the screw, first of all, will be much higher. Mm -hmm and the diameter of the pillar will have to be as the base of the cone. You can make it smaller. So the pillar itself will be much bigger in diameter and in, in height. And as we talked before, these implants are buccally inclined. So with this inclination, when you have higher height of the pillar, you'll have much bigger buccal inclination in the aesthetical parts of the of the overdenture, I know that in uh, bars you don't have a problem with the inclination of the screw channel. Uh, the use of angulated multi units wouldn't solve the problem. We can use ang angulated multi units, but first of all, we don't need it for the screw channel, as you said, because you have an overdenture that fits on the bar later, so you mask the screw channel. It doesn't matter where it goes. With angulate multi-units in this case, you'll have different problems because first of all, angle, angle multi-units is much bigger. So in the buckle area, you'll have the buckle bulge of the angulate multi-unit. It's first of all. Then you'll have the same problem with the cone, with the cone of the big multi-unit. The pros of using these types of multi-units, uh, the standard ones that you have an angulate multi-units with the same shape, so you can use the same sleeves, you have the same libraries, you have the same screws. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest advantage of using those type of multi-units. If I'm using in here, instead of this one, I'll use an angular multi-unit, I'll have twice the problem that I have with straight one, because the cone will be the same, I'll have a buckle bulge, the height of the multi-unit probably will be a little bigger, because when we use one millimeter angulate multi-unit, the one millimeter is in the smallest part of the angulate multi-unit. 
In the bigger part, depends on the angle, it, will, it can be two and two and a half. Every multi-unit for every case, for every scenario. Yeah, the, the best part is to know what types of parts to use for every scenario, as you said, because in this case, we would use the small ones, the small multi-units, and we won't use the big uh, multi-units. The bar that we'll, we'll be able to make the pillars will be very small, the height of the pillars. And we can shift the, uh, the main part of the bar more palatally. So you have more space for the aesthetic part of the denture. Here you can see the, uh, the end result. You, you see the two dentures, the upper and lower one. You see that you don't see any metal at all. You don't see reflection of metal because you have enough space for the uh, for the plastic, for the opaque that uh, closes, that masks the metal part, for the teeth, for the gingiva. Can I ask a question? Why to make a bar in the first place? Like, why not to make a, a denture on the gingiva, like they used to do in World War II, and finish the story, and that's it. Like my grandpa used to have. Yeah. We're still making dentures uh, without implants but the quality of life with regular dentures without implants is much worse because for the upper jaw it can be satisfying let's say it can be okay you won't have great results never you never will have great results with denture without implants you always want to have at least two implants for the lower jaw for the mandible it's almost impossible to make a good denture without any implants. Mm -hmm. So you always want at least two implants. You can always find a place for at least two implants, in, almost always, in the anterior part, between the mental nerves. This is what you want to have, at least few implants to hold the denture so it won't fall off. Uh, if you want to do it on a bar or want to use ball attachments or uh, different types of attachments, it doesn't matter. You can use anything you want. With bar, you have less problems that denture would break. When you use ball attachments or different types of uh, attachments that are not connected, the pressure on the bar is, goes in one spot. So this spot can be the breaking point of the denture. Uh, if you use on four implants, for example, you have four spots. Uh, the forces on these spots are a little smaller because it goes on to four implants. Uh, if you have only two implants, it would, it would be twice higher. In these cases, in mo many times you don't make a metal substructure for the denture. So you have only uh, four small dots that all the pressure is applies on them and all the denture is from PMMA, from plastic, for, from acrylic. So the denture has high chances to break. When you do the work on the bar, you have um, over the basis of the oven, over denture is metal based. It has much less uh, chances to break down because it's based on a metal carcass and on the metal you have all the plastic, all the acrylic. So, so it's the force is spread. Yeah, you spread the force and it lasts much longer in the patient's mouth. Thank you very much, Dr. Ganev. You're welcome. Thank you for being here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and feel free to send us your cases so we can review them. Have a great night.